And how do you make that boring? How do you make a character like that so uninteresting? It was just like, oh, can we move on from his dick, please? I was so bored from like the get go and hello booktube and merry christmas to you all i have another reading update for you trying to do this every 10 to 12 books and it just so happens that it's fallen dead on christmas day the veggies are in the oven roasting silly australian tradition let's let's do it on a 30 degree day let's roast veggies for christmas lunch because that's that's what we do Let's turn the big oven on when the house is already ridiculously hot. Cause So it's just Nell and I for Christmas. Normally we'd go to my, my family's house, but that has been moved to Boxing Day. So we're having a chilled out Christmas. I've got a vegan roast chicken, a whole chicken, but it's vegan. I, I don't know whether that's going to be a good thing or not. I don't know whether it's going to have bamboo bones or not. I am confident enough in my cooking ability that if it's terrible, I can make something else. And this morning we got up and we had our coffee and, and some breakfast and we watched the season finale of Drag Race Canada vs. The World. Slight spoiler alert. Oh boy, that show is fat phobic. I mean, you had two clear obvious winners of that show who were both fat and you chose to give it to the one skinny bitch in the finale who was less talented than the other two. <sighs> Is it... I just... I could not decide whether it was sexism or misogyny, um, whether it was fat phobia or misogyny that Victoria did not win that because, I mean, like, if you're going to rig it, at least fix the editing so that I believe it, you know? Like, think about when Bianca won. I know that most of you don't come here for a drag race rant, but um, those of you who, who watch it, and I know quite a few people watch it, what the fuck? I've got 12 books that I've read. You know how last week I said I'd read 10 books and none of them are DNFs? Well, we've turned the tables this time. 12 books, six good, six bad. And we're gonna start with the six I DNF'd. That's right, 50% DNF rate. I'll start with my most recent DNF, and this one I did DNF this morning. I, I read I read some pages of it this morning, and I just couldn't go on with it. And it was a buddy read, and I always hate DNFing buddy reads. I mean, everybody hates DNFing buddy reads, but sometimes you just got to accept that a book is not for you. And An Unnecessary Woman by Rabbi Amal Medine. I feel like my mouth didn't cooperate with my brain then. This is a book about books, and normally that should be fine. I'm interested in books, right? Like... Let's say you write a book about books. We all like books. We're reading books. We like books. So I was buddy reading this with the wonderful Gemma from Gem of Books. I said to Gemma, I'm like, like every one of these books is written by a guy. And then she said to me, and I've only read Lolita out of the thousands he's named. I, I'd only read Lolita too and, and Samuel Beckett. And and I was like, when all of these books are are in this and they're 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 being referenced it's just like it's a list of books i can i can go to listopia or to you know i can just google a hundred books i must read before i die or what is the western canon list of books and I'll, i will get a list of books and i can read those books but i'd like some sort of discussion around those books i'd like anything around those books and there was really sparseness. And when they did talk about authors that I had read, so I had read Samuel Beckett. It's the most shallow comments ever. It really didn't add a lot. Um, this is a book about an elderly lady who is in her, her 70s. She's dyeing her hair blue and she has lived through uh, the Lebanese civil wars. And how do you make that boring? How do you make a character like that so uninteresting? And I just, there was another, there was a scene early on where she has sex with a man. And I don't know why she does it. It was really poorly characterised. I, I did not understand her motivations. Like, she'd known this man for ages. It seems to come out of the blue that they're having sex. Like, what's what's changed? Why why weren't they having sex straight away? Why they why why did they wait so long? What what is going on between these two people? Explain the emotions. It just felt like, oh well, you know, I'm a guy, you're a girl, or vice versa in this situation. Well, we should should we do it now? I well, I guess I guess that has to happen because we're in a book together. It, it's quite plotless too. If you write a plotless book, you have to make good characters. That's 
really the rule. And I would give this book to someone and say, this is not how you make a character. This is some terrible character writing. And what are we left with? We're left with a conversation about books that is not actually talking about books. And a Civil War setting, which did not make me feel scared. What I don't understand about this novel, I don't get it. I I can... I'm, I'm happy to hate on a book if if what it's doing is not something I like or if I can see what it's doing and I think it's doing it badly. I just don't see how how you could possibly. The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrente. This was my first time reading Elena Ferrente and I did not enjoy her prose. Uh, and that is the end of that. If you read Elena Ferrente, is this a particularly bad book? Have I picked the wrong starting point? Oh, I really hated this prose. I could not. I was so bored from like the get go. Kokomo by Victoria Hannon. This is an Australian novel and a, I would call this an ode to a penis. That's, this is just lovely, lovely writing about one woman's infatuation with one man's penis. It's a very, very beautiful white penis. There's, it's something to do with London and Melbourne and moving backwards and forwards, but really it was just repetitive penis worship. And it's not the penis worship that worried me, it's the repetitive nature of it. I got it. I got it. Nina likes Jack's cock. Yeah, great. Great. Can we progress the storyline on? The, the, the man that is attached to the penis, does he, does he have a personality? Is he, do I like him or do I not like him? Is he tall? I just felt like this wasn't coming. This was just like, you know, you know, when sometimes you're reading a book by a man talking about a woman and they boo bobbly down the stairs are very, are very prominent in their body parts and don't have much of a personality. Yeah, this was, this was the opposite. This was, I mean, maybe it's comedic objectification and I didn't get it, but it was just like, oh, can we move on from his dick, please? There's only so many times, like, it's not, it's not even that it's about a penis, but how many times do you want to say the same thing? Like, objectify, if, if you're going to objectify, objectify. If that's accurate to your character, that's, that's fine. Just try to do it in your character's voice, which this, this author has done. It's just, don't, don't repeat yourself. I mean, which is pretty much this review, to be honest. Maybe I'll edit out all the repetitive stuff. Chai Time at Cinnamon Gardens by Shankari Chandran. If you're looking at that and you're like, oh, this looks like it's a TJ Klune novel or something, it's very much not. It is a novel about racism. It is a novel about asylum seekers. It's a novel with the lines, go back to where you came from with race-based violence in it. I don't think the title is particularly well representative of the book, but I, I, I actually don't think it's a terrible title either. I felt like there was quite a lot of characters. I felt them were very indistinguishable for, for me. And there were some, some bad guys in this for one of a better word and I felt like they were very one dimensional you know you could you could argue that something like Kim Ji-yeon born 1982 had quite quite one dimensional villains in it but that it doesn't really matter because you're showing what the actions are how they affect the protagonist I just felt like the combination of this with too many indistinguishable characters and the effects being violence, it didn't really work for me. I either have to understand the, the motivations of the characters. You either want me to empathise with the system that creates these villains. You, you want me to create, to empathise with the villains to understand the system that, that creates them. Or you want me to empathise with the victims of these villains. And I don't really feel like I could do either of them. True Biz by Sarah Novak. I have some reservations about the quality of this book but what my real problem with this is there are some books that should not be made into audiobooks i get it i get it if you've if you've made a popular book make it into an audiobook it makes money but this is a novel about a deaf community a deaf school with the various different deaf cultures in it and I just don't think it works as an audiobook. And I don't believe it should have ever been made into one. And so if you're looking to read this, um, 
read read it as an electronic book or as a physical book. But do not do not go for the audio. It felt quite Celeste and you know the start of Little Fires Everywhere. There's a fire and and you sort of wanna you wanna read it because you wanna find out what created this fire. What's what's going on? Where where do these carry? You know it creates interest. It's you know if you're making a video, what do you put at the very start of your video? You put your hook on. I read a five star book. It's fantastic. I'm gonna save it till last. And that's what this has not done as a as a book. Now, speaking of books that I don't necessarily think are bad, but are definitely not for me, Notes on an Execution by Danya Kafkuka. You know, you look at some books and you're like, I'm not sure that this is what I want it to be. I'm not sure. This is a book about a man on death row. You know, it sounds like a really good piece of literary fiction, but it also sounded like a really good thriller or a really bad thriller or a mediocre thriller. I don't really know. But it was definitely a thriller. And I could tell that from the quality of the writing, which this this really concerns me for uh, the quality of a book. I, and I wonder if this is sort of where... Is this... This is definitely where I see a little, sort of a snobbishness from the literary fiction community. And, and I'm definitely... I'm, I'm, I'm aware that just because I'm aware of my attitudes, that doesn't make them any better. But, you know, as a literary fiction reader, reading something that is clearly genre fiction by, by mistake, I felt like this writing was absolutely abysmal. It just was not up to quality. Is this a judgment on thrillers or is this a judgment on me or is this a judgment on the author? Is, is this the difference between literary fiction and genre fiction? I'm or, or do I just think that this is a terrible book? And I don't really know the answers to that. What I do know is I do not think that this prose is as good as I want to read. I want better prose than this when I read a book. Flat out did not come up to the mark. And I've judged it as a thriller because of that. And maybe that was not fair. Maybe, maybe it is a literary fiction that is terrible. I don't know. All right, six books that I have read, and it's a little bit difficult to put these in order of worst to best, but I'm going to kind of try, but know that if I was doing this on another day, that this would be a little bit different. Scattered All Over the Earth, Yoko Tawada. This is a, is, is a dystopian, and it has an indigenous Greenland person in it. It's sort of based so far in the future that Greenland has gone from this tiny, tiny land to somewhere that we farm because of climate change. Are often mistaken for Japanese because um, they, they kind of you know, terribly racist attitudes kind of look slightly similar. But the Japanese people are, and they're, they're, they're not Japanese, they're from the land of sushi, which no longer exists, it's underwater. I, I may have just assumed it was underwater, but Japan no longer exists. I thought that this was such an interesting book for the world building. I loved just the little details that were were in this the Denmark was this big country and that at some point they were moving to the south into the tiny country below it Germany like little things like that I just I, I really enjoyed and the way the world was different I, I I could really easily get lost in this what is really unfortunate about this book is that is a really nice starting point and that is all I really have to say that is nice about this the sort of the plot and the characters I just didn't really care about there was something to do with umami going on it's completely forgettable it is just nice world building and an interesting world and if you like that aspect of a book then read this book if you want plot and characters and that sort of stuff then there's not much to say about this really i mean i'm not unhappy that i read it it is it is distinctly average but i'm not unhappy that i read it limber lost by robbie arnott this is a portrait of a man and the man's brother has sort of gone away to war and then we're, we're all over the timeline is all over the place with this we're worried about this kid who might get called up for war and he wants to go out there and see whales and and build a boat and then we're sort of in the future and he has these daughters who like question him because he runs an apple orchard 
and they're like, did you take the, the land from the indigenous people? What do you think about those people? What about the logging? And it's a, like a real coming together of ideals. This is sort of aimed at forcing progressives to have a look at the other side. And this character is certainly not like this evil bad person, but he's just never considered things from the other side. I felt like the ending of this was quite sad. I very much liked that. This was intermittently quite a good book, but I don't know if it works all together. I, I feel like I'm, I feel a little bit unsatisfied after this one. I feel like I, I wanted something extra in it. I don't know what I would have done differently, to be honest, but it just sort of lacked a little something for me. There wasn't enough in this book to make that big impression. I, I really wanted a little bit more complexity and a little bit more internalized thinking of from, from from Ned or something to let me know what Ned is thinking. Four Treasures of the Sky, Jenny Tehungi Zan. This is a historical fiction of a woman who is born in China and has to flee her home for her life and ends up studying calligraphy. I've made that sound really boring, I'm sorry. It's hard not to tell you that this is not a boring book. This is actually very plot heavy, quite exciting. It has a, a really good plot. Not a lot of it takes place in China. Uh, most of it takes place in America, actually. It's broken up into four well, they could be novellas. They could stand alone novellas. They form a novel in their own. So it's quite clever in that way. And each of them, you know, has their own sort of typical plot where you um, you have a journey with your plot and, and, and it has an ending. At various stages of this plot, this poor woman, this poor girl, is being trodden on by different people, trodden on by men, trodden on because of the race she is, trodden on because of her age, trodden on because of her wealth, trodden on because of whatever. One of the things I really like about this is that at various points she decides to dress up as a boy, switching between girl and boy. It has a detailed account of what it's like to be a sex worker in this. It is really depicting early early Chinese American racism when the Chinese were blamed for stealing Americans jobs and uh, and it's inspired by a real life event that the author talks about at the end of this book. I think that this is just a, a good historical fiction about some really quite big and sad stuff. Acts of Desperation by Megan Noland. This is a story about um, our protagonist who is unnamed and her infatuation with a boy named Kieran. It's not a particularly healthy relationship. It's not a particularly two-sided relationship. It's very one-sided. And it's just about how all-consumingly in love this lady is with this man. It's just, it's a list of horrible things men do to women. And I would not be surprised to find out that these what had all happened to Megan Nolan at some point or to one of her friends at some point. At one point she talks about rape as an act of violence and rape as a sexual act and how when we're told it's an act of violence we sort of take out the sexuality of it and that that is not representative of all cases. She talks about times when she's had sex willingly, happily, but not happily if that makes sense. Like, she didn't want to have sex, but she agreed to do it, so she's having it, like, that sort of thing, versus when she doesn't want to have it and she's been made to have it because she... and, and not fighting back because she feels like that's safer. Non-violent abuse is one of the things she talks about the most. She talks about wanting to be degraded. It's really a bit messed up. It's really a bit horrible, and I don't think that everybody will enjoy reading this book. But it is quite an emotional journey, it is very well done. It does leave an interesting flavour in your mouth, which is probably quite horrible. This is a horrible book, and if you're not into horrible books, don't don't even try to pick this up. It's a horrible book, and it's it's done quite well. I'm trying to pick between my favourite two of the month, and it's quite hard. I, I'm, I'm leaving 
one till last. I'm not actually sure it's my favourite one, but I, I still am processing what I think about that one. This one, however, We All Want Impossible Things, Catherine Newman. This is the story of a terminally ill woman told from the point of view of her best friend who is having a bit of a slutty moment. But both women are in their mid-40s. Our protagonist has children and she is looking after this, this lady, you know, looking after her best mate as she is in hospice. And it is a black comedy. It is very funny, but the humour is, I mean, it's... It's dark. It's very dark. I thought this was a, an interesting choice of narrator. But the best friend, it's really the story of the best friend. It's really the story of losing somebody's friend. And that moment of, I, I, you know, I can't wait for this to be over to go and talk to them to decompress about this and to, and realizing that actually that's, that's not going to be a, a thing that you get to do because when this is over, they're, they're gone. I can think of nothing sadder than losing your best friend, whether your best friend is your partner or not. There's just like that person that you just talk to about all of the things and and losing that person and, and like that, that's so important in somebody's life. Like, how do you replace that? I just, I think this is a very good character portrait. I think it's a very good dark comedy. I think this is a very, very good book. I really recommend this one. Like the grief and the how sex and grief mixed up. I thought that was great. I loved I loved that Ash was like openly bisexual and that she has a lesbian daughter and when her daughter catches her with a woman, she's like, oh gross mum but kudos on it being a woman i, I definitely loved that and, th and i think that's like the whole book is just those things that shouldn't be funny but are it's very well done lastly is Catherine lacy's pew this i think is quite a thought-provoking novel and i i don't actually even know if i like it yet i i think i'm gonna have to do a review on this book just to figure everything out. I think that the process of writing a review often helps me process everything that's going on. So let's talk about this. Pew is a the, the protagonist. They're, they're the titular character. They go into a church to sleep and the community find them asleep in the church. And nobody knows anything about Pew. They're called Pew because they were found on a pew and Pew doesn't speak. Pew won't tell anybody their gender. And people are debating about whether Pew is black or white. People are debating whether Pew is 14 or 40. It's so weird. Like, the, the, there is nothing that they know about Pew. They don't know anything about Pew's background. And they're all like, we want to help you, but we really need to know a few things about you. But basically, most of this novel. Pew is our narrator, but they're really not present. They're not interacting with anybody. Do you think that this is about Pew when you start reading it, but it's really about the townsfolk and how their assumptions about who you are dictate how you're going to be treated. And it all builds towards this, and it's quite well built, actually, quite well foreshadowed and you get this real dread of this festival that they're building towards you like is this festival Christmas and then they sort of say some people think that there's human sacrifice at the festival but that doesn't happen that's a lie you're like what's going on at this festival and then one of the women's like the people are starting to misbehave because it's before the festival and everybody is forgiven at the festival and this sort of stuff and you're like what's what's going on but this these townsfolk, they start to be more and more hostile with Pew the longer that they don't give them any information about themselves. And I think that then you have this, like, extra level as you, as a reader, want to know, you just want to know, like, go on, what, what is, what are they? Are they, are they a boy or a girl or are they intersexed or are they, what, what are, are they an alien? Do they, does gender not exist where they come from? Like... What's, 
what's going on and you know the same thing with color and the same thing with age and and the whole time pew has amnesia they don't know why they're there and they never interact with things as a boy or a girl they're very passive which made me believe that they were probably a girl which then points out my own bias which i found even more interesting because as i'm reading this and then assuming things about them i'm like oh this is my bias that i am reading into this character which is even more fascinating i think that this is a very worthwhile read this is thought provoking and this is quite unique this is not the sort of book that i would usually like like the the characterization of pew is intentionally terrible and that is so that you don't know anything about them because that's the whole point i feel like this was a very very clever idea and it's quite well executed i i i'm i wonder why there wasn't more hype around this. this is a couple of years old now i really think there should be more hype around this i think that this one is gonna get a, a dedicated review at some point soon very very good book that is all the books i have time for today it's also all the books I've read. I, I don't really have a time limit on this. Let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know your thoughts on them. I hope you're all having a great Christmas. If I've got the time later today, I will edit this. I doubt that I will, though, and I think that you're probably going to see this on the 27th or the 28th. So if that's the case, I hope you all had a great Christmas. And uh, have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye-bye.